Here we have an EVGA graphics card that came in for repair. This one is the 3090. We already have the board disassembled and the board looks something like this. And customer said, red light. He sees a red light on the card and the card does not power on and nothing, dead. I worked on a few cards like this on the channel with a red light, with the red light issue. And we're going to see if this one is the same or what's going on with this court. A red light is likely a short circuit on the board, but it could be something else. Who knows? We have three 12 volt inputs, one, two, and three, the good old days. Now with the 4090, it's only one connector and you see problems with the connector, melting, burning, breaking. All 16 pins are fit into one connector. But that's 2024. God knows what the future holds for 2025. They're going to make it wireless, no connectors. So we're going to start by checking the 12 volt coil here, diode mode. We have 0 0.48 voltage drop. And if that's the case, then our fuse sh should also be good. 0 0.48, 0 0.48, right? Yes. And then if we check, we should have two more coils for 12 volts and 12 volts. Start with this one, 0 0.49, that's good. Check on the fuse, and the fuse is good. And then check on the fuse here. I'm not getting a reading. Oh, well, look at this. No reading. I bet if we check on the bottom here, it's going to be a short circuit. Look at this. So right now we did two in one. We hit two birds with one stone. We discovered that the fuse is blown because we are reading OL here and a beep here or a short. And because we hear a beep, the other probe is connecting to ground, we know that we have a short circuit. If we measure here, we have a short circuit, we have a short circuit, we have a short circuit, short circuit. What did I tell you? Red light on an EVGA 3090 is likely a short circuit. Where is the short circuit coming from? This is one big board, very thick. And what we're going to do is inject voltage at the shorted component, whether it's the fuse, the current sense resistor, or the inductor. And we're going to monitor the board under a thermal camera and see what gets hot. The thermal camera in this scenario is very tricky because heat will be extremely minimal. We have to open our eyes. We have to look for the slightest heat spot to figure out where the problem is coming from. It's not going to be easy. I'll show you. Right now, I'm only talking, but you'll learn more if you see. So let me go to the thermal camera. We're going to use the Northbridge Fix NF.short voltage injection tool, and we're going to inject about 1.4 volts. If 1.4 does not work, we're going to bump up voltage slightly until we are able to see a heat spot on the board. Can I inject 12 volts? No. Can I inject 10? No. Can I inject 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3? No. 1.4, 1.5. If you have to, up to 1.9, you should be okay. So I have the voltage injection tool on. Right now we have around, what do we have? 1.4 volts. Connect the ground probe to any metal area on the board. And we're going to inject voltage at the shorted component. And I'm mainly interested in the V-Core MOSFETs, in the DR MOSFETs. We have some on the right side and we have some on the left side. So we have some right here, right next to the caps. And we have some right next to the caps on the other side of the board or on the left side of the board right here so we're going to inspect both areas let's start with this one i cannot tell Okay, got it. I got it. I told you it's very slight. 
look at this area right here. Okay? Keep looking. Keep looking. You see it? Let me put the crosshair over it. Right there. Look at the target. I'm going to move the target away. And look at this. It's right over here. So what's here? I just want to pinpoint which DR mass is the problem. I mean, if you do not have good eyes for this, you're not going to be able to see it because the board has a lot of reflections and you see a lot of yellows, a lot of shiny stuff on the board. So it's really extremely difficult to pinpoint the issue. But I can see it. So a very minimal tiny heat spot. And the heat spot is coming from, if you count the caps down, one, two, three, and it's right on the left side, right on the left. It's on the left, this guy right here. Let's remove it and see if that will release our short. This guy. I'm going to put this shield just to protect the caps. And of course, I'm going to wear my goggles if I can find them. I got them right here. Because you never know, the cap may pop. The shield is going to protect. And what I can also do is add some thermal pads here. You know the thermal pads that we sell on our site? We can add maybe two of them right here. And I have a jar full of them. I think 100 pieces inside the jar. Whatever you need, flux, braid wig, soldering station, hot air station, thermal camera, power supply, voltage injection tool, tweezers. You can buy it all off our site including this amazing microscope. We have the all new microscopes in stock. They come with the measuring feature. And I'm gonna put that thermal pad right here. Just like that. And let's remove that plastic piece on top and I'm gonna put a second one so you can just log in to northwestshakes.com click on shop add whatever you need to cart we have all items in stock unless the item is not in stock I mentioned this in every video for all new viewers check out pay and we almost always ship out same day If you have ordered from us before, you know how fast we ship. Let me know, comment down below if you have ordered from us and tell us about your experience with shipping or the products. And we're gonna go for this guy right here. That chip is out. See what I did is I used that shield with the thermal pads and I put captain tape on top of the shield to keep the shield from leaning forward. The shield did lean forward a bit, but not too much. And that's because of the captain tape. Look at this, you see how I put tape from the shield onto the board? Now we're going to check and see if we still have a short circuit now that the chip is out. And I did not look at if the chip is the AL. Yeah, it's AL. No problem. Let's check here and see if we still have a short circuit. And remove the goggles. Let's see, do we still have a short circuit? It's better to apply solder onto those pads now because the board is still hot. Solder will flow better. Check here, do we still have a short? 
Now I need to turn the multimeter on first to add to the suspense. And perfect. The short is gone. Amazing. We pinpointed the bad guy, removed them, and we do not have a short anymore. Right now we need to apply solder here, replace the chip, and we're gonna also replace the fuse, and we should be back in business. We do not need the shield if we are using the soldering iron, but we do need the shield when we use hot air. Those caps can just pop, and they're guaranteed to make you walk with one eye. We're gonna use a lot of flux because those pads are relentless. The board is thick, and the pads here, or the board is gonna absorb heat like crazy. So flux is your friend. We're gonna use more flux and I need to add solder onto the soldering iron tip. And we should be good. All we need to do is grab an AL chip, solder it on, replace the fuse, and test. All right. Now we're gonna press and hold, and we're gonna apply more heat. And we are spot on. Look at the placeholder here and compare with the placeholder here. And just a tiny bit showing from here and a tiny bit showing from here. So all 10 pins from the bottom are connecting as one. So it doesn't matter if those pins bridge. Same goes on the pins that are on the side. Just go back in the video and look at the pads when I remove the chip. A lot of the pads, they connect to each other. We're gonna use the Northridge Fix brush, Kimtech wipes, 99% isopropyl. If you don't have 99%, you can use 91%, you can use 93%. Anything over 90% is good. Do not use 70%. It contains a lot of water. I got this question a lot. What do you use to clean? Kemtech wipes, the Northridge Fix brush, and Kemtech wipes. Now, all we need to do is replace that blown fuse right here. And Let's wait for the station to heat up and look at how beat up that tip is. But it's functional. Now we did not measure anything else on the board because it does not make sense to measure anything else on the board if we have a short on the 12 volt line. That's number one. Let's replace that fuse. Perfect. Now we're gonna check for a short again, meter in diet mode. And we're gonna check here. Before we got OL, now we have 0.41. The board is so hot, it should go up to like 0.44. And we have 0 0.41. Excellent, excellent. We did an amazing job. Hopefully the card works and it doesn't have any more issues. Let's plug in the card. You know what, before I do, I just want to test for the 
PCIe 12 volt rail, make sure it's not shot into ground. The third pin from the left, no short, 3.3, we don't have a short, and we should be good. So the board is connected to a PCIe adapter over to a Dell motherboard, and we have three power connectors on the bottom here. One, let's make sure those are plugged in all the way. Very nice. And we're gonna plug in our HDMI connector, which we have right here. And the next step is to move the camera all the way to the monitor. And we're gonna turn the power supply on. And right now the motherboard is connected to a Dell motherboard. So we should see a Dell logo on the screen, the top one, if the card is working, or six beeps if the card still has issues. Are we gonna get Yes, yes, yes. Amazing, amazing, amazing. We did it. Let me turn the power supply off. And camera back here. I'm going to hand the card over to Big Boss to further test it, invoice, and mail this back to the customer. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think. Leave it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And we'll do something else in the next video.